So let me know if you've heard this one before. A dumpster fire, a turd, and a dominant leader walk into a global marketplace and compete. Oh, you have heard? Yeah, you know how it ends? Yeah, that's right. The turd and the dumpster fire go out of business and the dominant leader continues to dominate. Cool. All right, well, I won't tell the full trick then. In today's video, Lucid, Rivian, and Tesla. Who's leading in the EV marketplace? Well, I think you already know the answer to that. First of all, I asked AI to create a visual summary of the Lucid Q2 earnings report and on screen now, that was the result. I am joking about this being AI generated, but no more accurate representation could possibly exist. This, in short, from Lucid, the company lost $790 million in Q2. At the same time, they had just $1.25 billion in cash. They've since raised another $1.5 from their Saudi sugar daddy, more on that in a moment, buying them just a few more months. And importantly, not only is Lucid losing close to a billion dollars a quarter and close to running out of cash, but they have to sell vehicles on the same planet as Tesla. And as I mentioned in this post, the only thing keeping Lucid alive is their sugar daddy, the Saudi public investment fund, who seems to have a kink for letting near bankrupt companies suckle from his teat. Now, you'll remember, if you've been watching this channel for a number of years that I roasted Lucid investors at the time, I literally referred to them as mentally impaired, a far end of the bell curve. I did this to trigger a response in the actual dumb motherfuckers who thought, oh, Lucid's an ex-Tesla. Tesla did it. It was easy. That I wasn't trying to be mean. I was trying to trigger a response, a reaction to my obnoxiousness. So these people dug their claws in a little bit and tried to spit some facts and prove me wrong and then realized that they're setting their money on fire. I also just want to paint the picture regarding Rivian, this from AJ on X. Looking at Rivian's cash position, which already reflects their first 1 billion tranche from Volkswagen, who recently, if you guys don't know, Lucid has a Saudi sugar daddy, and Rivian, well, has a bunch of sugar daddies. Like, I, I don't know how sugar daddies normally work. I guess you can have multiple and that's okay with everyone, but their latest sugar daddy, Volkswagen. So the post goes on. Taking into account Rivian's $1 billion cash burn per quarter and a minimum cash level of $4 billion, what I see is quite a weak negotiation position. Rivian basically got four quarters of effective runway without Volkswagen. So they had one year. AJ continues, Volkswagen knows it and he's right. Volkswagen also knows that a cancellation of their joint venture would collapse Rivian's share price. So Volkswagen has Rivian by the nuts. I mean, the dude ain't wrong. So this is Rivian's current situation, the current cash position. Not a great trend again. If they weren't competing on the same planet as Tesla, they might have a slightly better chance. But they are competing on the same planet as Tesla. And to be super clear, Rivian certainly has a stronger possibility of surviving than Lucid. Rivian, at best, a coin toss, and that's probably being generous. Lucid, I'd probably say that Lucid has an even lower chance of surviving than Elon's most passionate haters have of curing their depression by convincing people that Elon Musk is a fraud. I do wish Rivian success, I wish Lucid success, but I am also willing to call a spade a spade. Rivian, they might survive, maybe. It'll be miraculous. Lucid, absolutely fucked. Time for the 360 round all about electric vehicles because we've had some reports, some are due to report, and Tesla's always in the news. Oliver Blanchard, Olivier Blanchard, research director, Futurum Group. Steve Wesley, founder, managing partner, the Wesley Group. Thank you both for being with us. Um, Steve, I mean, should we focus on Lucid? It came out with the quarterly numbers. You have the Saudi Arabian Wealth Fund um, injecting more money. What do you think about Lucid as an EV car maker in the big picture? Look, uh, Lucid makes a beautiful car, 520 mile range, zero to 60 uh, in three seconds. That's extraordinary. Give them credit for raising 4.5 billion in a SPAC, getting another two and a half billion from the Saudis, but they're losing $2.5 billion a year. They only produce 2,400 cars in Q2, lucky to hit the 9,000 K uh, target this year. They're gonna need to produce 10 times that number to get to profitability. They've only got 4.3 billion in the bank runway through uh, Q4 of this year, but I just don't see a clear path to profitability. I'd be a little worried. A little worried. Well, that's certainly a delicate way to say they're completely and utterly fucked. I just want to be clear, by the way, they're literally trying to produce 9,000 vehicles for the whole fucking year. Now, look, I don't want to kick a burning dumpster fire when it's down, but we're on the Lucid website. I just wanted to remind you guys of the Lucid investor presentation also known as Tardbait, I won't explain that, from July 2021, just prior to their IPO. Specifically, 
the production volume and revenue forecast, which at the time, and you guys can fact check me, you'll remember I roasted this. I went through the whole presentation, tore it to bits. I said, there's no fucking way they even believe this. Lucid, back in 2021, luring in people with, well, I'll just say it, low intelligence into their stock because we're the next Tesla. In an official investor presentation, no less, quote unquote, forecasting that for the full year in 2024, they would deliver 90,000 vehicles. Nine, zero. And as I record this, just a few years later, they are now targeting the delivery of 9,000, literally 10%. They're off by an order of magnitude from 2021 to 2024, an entire order of magnitude. To put this in perspective, picture, if you will, a woman who weighs 100 pounds, five foot tall. Now, picture that same woman weighing in at 1,000 pounds. If you're unable to do so, I've given you a little bit of assistance on screen now. Being off by 10%, no big deal. Being off by 100%, a big deal. Being off by 1,000%, which is the situation with Lucid just a few years later. I mean, you have to ask the question, was this company embarrassingly wrong or lying? Now, just to be really clear, they were projecting in 2021 that in 2022, they would deliver 20,000 vehicles, more than double what they're now aiming for in 2024. In 23, 49,000. So here's the question. When will Lucid actually deliver 20,000 vehicles in a year? And that may be a trick question. I'm not going to explain why. Yeah, look, uh, so not producing, burning through cash, and uh, not one that you're uh, hot on at this time. It trades at around $3. It's up 1%. Olivier, how Oh, by the way, I just want to take another quick moment here. Any of the so-called stock analysts who ever recommended investors buy Lucid should be out of a job. But I don't think they're compensated or even employed based on performance. But I just want to put that out there because at the time, there were analysts recommending investors buy this and I was roasting them too. How about Rivian? Uh, we're waiting on the Rivian numbers throughout this afternoon. Are you expecting anything uh, surprising or pieces of good news within this report? Well, I think it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag, just like it is. It's, it's been a weird couple of days for, uh, for stocks regardless. And anything that touches tech in any way, shape or form is just a, a little bit of a mixed bag. I think with Rivian, if, if you're looking at pros and cons, uh, cons is still they're, they're losing way too much money per vehicle. Their numbers aren't quite there. Uh, but the positive, I think, is uh, a German regulator finally gave the go-ahead for their uh, multi-billion-dollar deal with Volkswagen. Uh, so in that deal, I, I, I believe that uh, Volkswagen would have a one billion-dollar stake in Rivian, uh, and then Rivian in turn would uh, invest five billion, five or six billion, in a joint venture, uh, which basically deals with software and, and uh, uh, different systems on the vehicle. So that could potentially lower the cost of production make the cars more competitive. But again, there's a scale issue. Uh, it's not as bad as Lucid's, but it's it's a little bit of an echo of Lucid. They're not really getting the numbers yet. Uh, they need to be able to continue gaining momentum and have cash on hand to be able to move forward. And it's it's a little bit tricky. I mean, it's, it's a very difficult uh, industry to break into. Tesla did a good job, but you know, it took them over a decade to get to where they are. Uh, and, and Rivian just has a long way to go before I can achieve scale. Some important notes here. It did take Tesla over a decade, although Rivian's been around for a fair while. But here's the thing. You see, Tesla was not competing with Tesla. And that actually matters a lot. Today, not only does the company trying to ramp electric vehicles up to high-scale profitable production need to do the near impossible by achieving that, they also need to sell those products on the same planet, Earth, in which customers already have the option of buying extremely compelling relatively affordable but not all the way there yet and price is still coming down products from tesla where tesla is making money selling electric vehicles outside of china no other company is they're losing huge amounts of money the more vehicles they sell the more money they lose unless they can cross the near impossible bridge to high volume production but the problem is even if a company like lucid or rivian were to scale their production 10 times 15 times 20 times or more and bring their costs down to a point where they're finally starting to make a tiny bit of money for every electric vehicle sold. They still have to sell those vehicles on the same planet as Tesla. And Tesla's already told us what's around the corner. Their next generation unboxed manufacturing system is going to dramatically reduce their cost to produce compelling electric vehicles. So best case scenario, maybe half a decade from now, if you're lucky, Rivian at least could, in theory, have products that are cost competitive with today's Tesla vehicles. The problem is five years from now, Tesla isn't going to be producing what they're producing today for the same price and cost. And so they're going to have much more affordable, equally compelling vehicles. So good 
fucking luck. I think the best case scenario probably for Rivian too is getting acquired or even some kind of weird partnership. And I don't mean with Volkswagen necessarily, although VW, I mean, they're fucked anyway. They may as well just acquire Rivian and then go bankrupt anyway, whatever. But how embarrassing it must be, although not if you're the founder and you have a huge stake in the company, but imagine you're Rivian, this cool new electric vehicle startup, and ultimately you end up getting acquired by a dinosaur who then ultimately goes bankrupt anyway. I mean, I would not call that a success. Now, the haters will say I'm just deluded because I'm a Tesla fanboy. Therefore, I can't see things clearly. Rivian's fine. They're the next Tesla. So is Lucid. I'm not a dumb fuck for buying the stock. How dare you say that I had a small brain in 2021 when I was buying the stock because they're the next Tesla. You're just a terrible person. So uh, plot twist, you know how we've been talking about electric vehicles and Rivian, maybe if they're extremely lucky and do the near impossible, might maybe survive and Lucid are just completely and utterly fucked. <laughs> well, uh, guess what? Who cares about electric vehicles? They are an irrelevant sideshow when it comes to Tesla. I've just been analysing the probability of success with Lucid and Rivian on their core and only real businesses producing electric vehicles. But the real opportunity is in autonomy and then ultimately humanoid robots. I feel like we're going to see this same thing play out again and again. Years ago, Tesla electric vehicles, the competition is coming, blah, blah, the next Tesla, next minute we're seeing the next Tesla on the verge of bankruptcy. By the time people figure this out, Tesla will be operating robotaxis and you're going to hear the narrative, well, the competition is coming with robotaxis. XYZ robotaxi company is the next Tesla robotaxi and it won't be. And by the time people figure out Tesla has an unassailable lead with humanoid robots at scale, we're going to hear the same conversation, oh, the humanoid robot competition is coming. Will it ever end? So earlier I'm talking about five years from now, maybe if you were lucky, you're Rivian, you're finally starting to have a cost competitive electric vehicle with Tesla. Five years from now, Tesla's going to have robotaxis everywhere. Who fucking cares about the electric vehicle business anyway? Yeah, we're waiting for the big Tesla event now that was supposed to uh, actually be this week. Now it's not till October. Um, are we expecting some good things out of Tesla, Steve Wesley? I mean, is this one that you would buy into? I don't know if I'd buy into it. Again, I think they've got kind of a, an empty cupboard here for a while. You know, the Cybertruck has been a little bit of a, of a dud with recall, slow sales. Uh, I don't understand what this guy's talking about. Tesla told us ahead of time it'd be a very, very slow ramp compared to other vehicles because Cybertruck, completely new platform. I mean, everything about this vehicle is completely new and fresh, never been done before, not just the exterior. You've got steer-by-wire, higher voltage system internally. Everything about this is different. They warned us ahead of time it's going to be a slow ramp. So a slow ramp, uh, hello, that's what was expected. It's not slower than expected, it's to be expected. I'm not sure exactly what Steve's talking about regarding recalls, but again, this kind of stuff... Brand new product is to be expected. There's going to be a few things that aren't perfect on the first few vehicles produced. But bro, what are we just going to pretend that Tucker Carlson didn't just post this video of Cybertruck blowing away people in rural United States? 34 million views and counting. We're just going to pretend. By the way, the too long didn't watch on this is holy shit. It's at least as good as my Ford F350. This thing can actually do work. Wow. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. I suppose if we're pretending that didn't happen, we should also probably ignore Donald Trump. And Aiden Ross the other day, for those who don't know, Aiden Ross, a streamer with millions and millions and millions of subscribers, interviewed Trump. And what did he do? The big moment, the most viral thing during the interaction, Aiden Ross gifting Donald Trump, you guessed, a Cybertruck wrapped in that iconic photo. Huge moment here. Trump describing the Cybertruck, by the way, as beautiful and incredible. Also saying, Elon, you did great. And this was not just a fleeting moment, but a major focal point of the stream. I mean, look, these two guys sitting in a Cybertruck right now, running through a Spotify playlist, low-key, unintentionally flexing the infotainment, the screen. I mean, hello, iconic, and of course, organic. Tesla didn't pay for this. This thing has taken the world by storm. Everyone who's anyone wants to be seen in one, or if you're a streamer, giving one away to the former president and soon-to-be president once again of the United States of America. It's super hard to understand what this guy's talking about. Like it just doesn't make sense. Cybertruck ramp has not been slower than anticipated, so we have to scratch that. It's taking the world by storm. Everyone who's anyone wants to be seen in their Cybertruck. Every A-list celebrity on the fucking planet has one. You're seeing stuff like the Aiden Ross stream, Tucker Carlson bringing this thing to rural America and impressing people. Why would he say such a thing? That being said, we are still talking about electric vehicles now. Autonomy is the main course. The $25,000 car, you know, put on hold. We'll see what's happening next there. Tesla's got to convince the market that they're more than a car company. They're a technology company. And to do that, they're going to have to come up with some pretty striking news on October 10th when they bring out the next version of full self-driving. I think they can do it. We'll see. The big challenge there is 
Waymo already has regulatory approvals in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Phoenix. They already have full self-driving cars on the road. The regulators have approved. Tesla's got to get over that hurdle. We'll see. What they might do is announce they have regulatory approval in China, and they're starting there, the world's largest auto market. That might be a bump for the stock, but they've got to... Yo, if that happened, I'll shit a fucking brick. I'm absolutely not expecting any announcement of regulatory approval anywhere. Don't get me wrong. It will happen at some point, but I expect... The event on 1010 is going to show Tesla's dedicated RoboTaxi product. Here's what it looks like. Here's a few variations, low density, high density. We're going to make these things as soon as we can and as many as we can. And you'll be able to hail one very soon. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Is Tesla going to surprise everybody and go, hey, surprise, we've got some regulatory approval in China or somewhere else on 1010? I'm giving that about a 0.4069% chance. Could happen, but I'll be stunned. Produce and uh, I've got my fingers crossed. We'll see. Yeah. And for Rivian, I mean, you noted the lack of profitability. Um, you just don't see great things for that one. Are, is there any name in the group that you do like, Steve? Well, I, I want to say a word about Rivian. Look, they make a great truck. They make a great SUV and a great delivery van. What they don't make is a profit. They lost $1.4 billion. <laughs> that was actually hilarious. Well pointed out. And it's an interesting point. There seems to be a lot of adults out there that see a product they like and go, oh, great product, therefore, company's going to survive, therefore, buy the stock. If only it were that simple. Billion in Q1, 5.4 billion for the year. That, that's hard. They're losing $40,000 uh, on each car they sell. They've just got to make dramatic cuts. Now, they're retooling the factory. We'll see what happens there. They're predicting profitability in Q4. I don't see that happening. Uh, there's a better chance of, of Trump agreeing to... to bait on MSNBC than that happening. In terms of the winners, uh, look at BYD and the Chinese. Hyundai and Kia are probably a close second. They're both getting it. They're moving quickly. And don't forget, battery prices continuing to come down. EVs are going to become cheaper every day. You're going to see more EVs on the road. My bet is Tesla, BYD, Hyundai. Sometimes on this channel, I say things that are very obnoxious with the intent to create a state change in people. Maybe they can reconsider some of their positions. Look, I'll be honest here. Sometimes I take it a little bit too far. So I just like to send a message in particular to the folks who invested in Lucid following their presentation back in 2021. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to apologize to absolutely no one. The walls are closing in on Lucid. Rivian, not that far behind them either. I wish them luck, but they'll need more than luck. They will need an absolute fucking miracle. To survive want more content early access a bunch of perks click the links in the pinned comment ag1 is awesome i've been taking it daily now for more than three years it's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps it's packed full of vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients plus has prebiotics probiotics and adaptogens to improve gut health regularity and help your body handle stress i'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best which is why i haven't missed a day of ag1 for more than three years and i haven't missed a daily video in more than three years must be a coincidence right just try it and see how you feel Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. 
everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens. Now, AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously. Try Athletic Greens. You won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game is improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.